That was a little loud, sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Sprake. I have the privilege of serving as your president for this Rotary year. And our uh, theme for the month of June is the Rotary Foundation's Fellowship Program, Peace Fellowships. The program today is moi, so be kind. And <laughs> we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a reflection from Darlene Colet. We will recite the four-way test at the end of the meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, before we have our reflection, I'm going to ask for a moment of silence. This has been a rough week for Muskegon Rotary. We have lost two members. Jason Bertoya passed away on Monday the 10th and Lisa Metzdorf passed away just this morning. So please join me in a respectful moment of silence for the members and their families. Thank you for that. Darlene has a reflection for us. I didn't understand until just this moment how appropriate perhaps what I'm going to say to you is. Um, I'm going to give you a quote from a woman by the name of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Some of you may be familiar with her. She was a psychiatrist and she came to mind as I was at a uh, hospice compassionate givers meeting last night because she really identified the stages of dying and the importance of our involvement in that process. And so when I just heard this announcement, um, I thought of her, uh, I thought of uh, what she did to really initiate the concept of hospice over time. Uh, and so I share with you some of her words. And it's called The Most Beautiful People are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of those depths. These pe persons have an appreciation and a sensitivity and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep loving concern. Beautiful people, do not just happen. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much for that. Uh, please be seated. Enjoy this time of fellowship and your lunch, and we will resume at 1220. Thank you. I hope you've been able to enjoy your time of fellowship, and we're going to proceed with the rest of our meeting. Um, as I said before, June is Rotary Fellowship Month, and we have a video on the Rotary Peace Fellows Certificate Program. Mr. Bogus? Rotary's Peace Centers programs offer unique opportunities for experienced professionals in peace and development studies. Each year, the Rotary Foundation awards up to 130 fellowships for study at leading universities around the world. Up to 50 for master's degrees and up to 80 for graduate certificates. The Rotary Certificate Program includes universities in Thailand and Uganda. The Certificate Fellowships are now a year long, combining a two-week online orientation, a 10-week on-site course with field studies, a nine-month social change initiative in their home countries, combined with mentorship and interactive online learning sessions, and a final one-week on-site capstone seminar. The fully funded program enhances the work of peace and development leaders who are addressing the underlying challenges to peace, from human rights violations to the impacts of climate change. Fellows gain theoretical and practical peace building skills, participate in field studies, design and implement a peace initiative, while expanding their global network and furthering their capacity as peace and development leaders. 
peace building is a cornerstone of Rotary's mission as a humanitarian service organization. If concerned citizens work together to create peace locally, lasting change can happen globally. For more information and to begin your application, visit. Thank you. Any of you who have um, yourselves or maybe a college graduates um, children might want to look into this uh, unique opportunity uh, as a postgraduate study course. It's pretty impressive. Uh, we are ready for guests that um, we have some guests today. If you could please come up with your your uh, Rotarian, we would be happy to meet you all. You'll be able to see yourself. <laughs> Good afternoon. Is this one? Good afternoon, yes. everyone. I'm Mary Ann Gorman, and I am with uh, Membership Recruitment, which is a pretty easy job these days because everybody in our club is just fired up and bringing guests all the time, so we're growing. Uh, our guests today uh, found us via parties in the park and uh, approached us and said we'd like to know more about your club and they are pat and marty green so we'd like to welcome you today to our lunch meeting hi nancy mccarthy here my guest today is andrea copeland and Andrea has started, uh, well, she's the sort of the visionary, the uh, founder and board president of a nonprofit food incubator called Lakeshore Flavor. So please welcome Andrea. Thank you. Hello, my guest again today is another Claire. <laughs> Um, this is Claire Ritter. She is a realtor with Five Star Realty and also an amazing human who wants to get more involved in the community. So welcome. We're really happy to have you with us. We hope you enjoy the, the rest of the program and meeting. And with that, it's time for the program. Now, normally somebody would come up and do an introduction. But since it's me, if you don't know by now, it's me. It's been, I didn't really hit the mark this year. So, And um, I am going to start the slides. As you can see, um, this is a review of the goals that I set last June uh, for uh, my Rotary year as president. It's by the numbers and with some observations too. Um, my goals for the year centered around members and engagement, youth services, community outreach, service projects, and the Rotary Foundation and Rotary Giving. So we'll see how I did, and you, because nobody does this alone. <laughs> so. Okay, uh, membership, I'm going to start with the best one. <laughs> Uh, until our, my goal was to increase our membership by three members. You fill out these goals for the district and you just don't want to get carried away. So I thought we can do three members. But on July, 20, uh, July 1st, 2023, we had 240 members. During the period from July 1st, 2023 through the end of May of this year, we added 32 new members. We did have 22 members leave our club. Most of those were due to employment, uh, relocations, and um, job uh, impact. Uh, we do have, at this point, have two members that are waiting to be inducted. So our membership on July, not, not July, I keep saying July. You think I'm looking ahead? Uh, June 9th is 250. So we really knocked that one out of the park. And as Mary Ann said, that's due to all of you. And I want to um, acknowledge the great work of the membership council headed up by Marianne Gorman. And yes, thank you. 
And I also want to recognize the people that work with her, Doug Wood, Jim Fisher, Aslan Scott, Amy Seymour, Tom Palmer, um, Bill Lockstroman, Lisa Tyler, uh, Doug Wood, Howard Hardesty, Sue Samaniego, uh, Lisa Stafford, Jim, Jim Fisher again, uh, Rob Mathis, Missy Horton, and Dimitri Poland. And our social chair, Tim Lipan, is also part of the membership council. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, more names. Uh, Darling Collet, Leanne Mikesell, Nancy Crandall, Susan Crane, and Irma Carney. So it's a big club. No wonder they did so well, just an effort like that. So thank you so much for all that you did to help our club and thank you to our members. You're the ones that bring us all these great new members. The next area is uh, youth services. Um, we Youth services is a pretty big initiative, Rotary. Uh, and I'm gonna go through um, the different elements just uh, slide by slide. Uh, and I'm gonna start with the college groups. That's our Rotaract clubs. Um, our goal really was not to increase um, the number of clubs, but uh, to in reinvigorate these clubs, which is happening. Um, we have new leadership at the Muskegon Community College Rotaract Club under Sue Samaniego. And we've uh, got our Baker College Rotaract Club. It's been reestablished and they're up and running. Uh, the college club will start really hitting the ground in the fall when the students return. But uh, Baker College is under Jamie Soa and we were at uh, a new member coffee yesterday and I said, oh wait, I need your picture. So there it is. So that's hot off the press. <laughs> so, um, Next up, we're coming uh, to our high school and middle school interact clubs. Um, my, the goal was to add one interact club this year, and uh, we did overachieve in this area too. So this was nice. Um, the clubs in green, Mona Shores Middle School and Oak Ridge High School. Oak Ridge um, had a club before, but it really came back into existence and it's up and running. They are our two new clubs, and along with Mona Shores High School, Muskegon High School, North Muskegon High School, Orchard View High School, and Reese Puffer High School. These are all really active clubs. We're always very proud of them. They always make us look good. In fact, sometimes you think, we don't have to do anything, they're doing it all. So, but we appreciate that and all the guidance that's given to them. I'm gonna recognize all that in a minute. Um, youth services, our earliest Rotarians, our early at club. Um, our goal there, or my goal, I should say, but it's ours because you're part of it, um, is was new leadership for the Lincoln Park Early Act Club. Josh Wallace, not Josh, excuse me, Jay Wallace, um, who junior, who was the leader of that. Uh, his daughter moved up to the middle school, which gave the impetus toward that new um, Mona Shores uh, Interact Club. Um, and I should have mentioned that Jenna Arter is going to be the uh, leader of that club um, from the middle schools. So we appreciate that. And then we had a bonus. Uh, North Muskegon Elementary is also starting an early act program. And one of my favorite meetings is pictured here when we had all these kids here on April 25th from the Lincoln Park Club. They got to hear about Paul Billings and his work in Africa. And it was just really fun to have them there um, seeing what the big Rotarians do. <laughs> so. Next up is youth exchange. Um, we uh, are privileged to have four inbound students this year. I have their names, I don't wanna miss these. They are um, Andrea Samaya, Thomas Urena, both of those gentlemen are from Columbia. Dory, I'm not gonna be even begin to pronounce her last name, so I'm not gonna uh, be bad, <laughs> do a bad job with that. It's from Hungary. And Kyoka Tomiyama is from Japan. Actually, Christy Pollack, who heads up that program, is in Japan herself right now. And then um, this uh, program that's pictured on the bottom left, that was um, last fall in October. And that's when all potential outbounds for the coming year and our, um, our inbounds were there for the meeting. You can see Christy down there in the corner. And then this is where we ex do one of the flag exchanges with our students. Um, I presented them with the Create Hope in the World flag. So 
that was a nice program to have as well. Life leadership. Um, this is uh, John Noling's uh, real pride and joy, I think, even he, though he helps with every area of youth service. Um, the goal was to increase the number of schools and students participating in the 75th anniversary conference. And John succeeded with that. Um, where are my figures? Here, I will get them for you. Life Leadership has 26 students from our club, and uh, it's the largest number we've ever had participating. There are 23 other Rotary Clubs represented and a total of 113 students. As I've said, this is the 75th anniversary. This uh, Life Leadership was started by the Muskegon Rotary Club, and um, it's been in continued existence since that time, which is pretty remarkable. It's a great record, and it's because they do such great things. They started off yesterday uh, with the bus trip, sort of depicted here. This is actually last year's bus trip. And their main speaker last night was Brianna Scott, our incoming district governor and a Muskegon Rotarian. So we're proud of that. Um, and then I also wanted to do a shout out to Marty Seitzema, who uh, does our student guests every week during the school year. Uh, that's a great uh, way to introduce lots of uh, leader, uh, young leaders to um, the adult possibilities of being a leader with a Rotary Club. So, um, as you know, and I should have said right away at the beginning, if I miss somebody, my apologies, I really tried to get everybody's name. Um, for New Generations Council, Randy Lindquist and uh, Ryan Sturkenberg for part of the year. Uh, Ryan, as you know, left, he moved to, I forgot where he moved, but um, anyway, he's uh, Stephanie Tushik, who's at Life Leadership right now will be joining Randy as the new uh, Generations Council Chairs. Our Interact, Rotaract, and Early Act Clubs. Uh, Inter Rotaract is uh, John Selman, MCC, and Aaron Mikey at Baker. They are the, the gentlemen that make those clubs possible. Um, for Interact, uh, the committee is Bill O'Brien, Doug Brown, Doug Wood, John Noling, Christy Pollock, Amy Seymour, Joni Smith, and Craig Parada, I sort of ran the youth exchange in there. And um, we do have uh, our, out, our current outbound students I'll be returning in July. There's gonna be a special party to say goodbye to our, our inbounds and welcome back to our outbounds. And that occurs in on July 12th or 13th. I can't remember, but Christy's hosting them. So you'll hear more about that. So, um, and then, also, as part of youth service, um, I want to make a notice that the goal was to continue. Whoops, I guess I should change the slide. Sorry, there we go. Uh, to continue our international service trips. These opportunities are very important to the young people in this community. Um, the picture on the left of the slide is our group that went to Honduras, and they helped build a school library and also furnish it. Um, and then the group um, under on the right is the El Salvador group. Um, and I will mention names in just a minute, but they went to um, build houses again this year. And they also bring used clothing and with them and they do sort of a market uh, um, for the village people, not the village people, but you know, <laughs> no YMCA, but um, the local and, the local citizens to come and and help get clothing and shoes and things like that that they need so let me get the names here for you so i can identify these correctly um and you i will say you're going to hear more about the service trips next week there's a whole program so i didn't want to steal too much thunder um the honduras group uh, uh, like i said went to santa rosa de copan and that to build the library uh, Sarah Rinsabeth Sigbinga uh, was the leader of our group from Muskegon Rotary, and she joined with Gail Ringelberg of the Spring Lake Rotary Club, and they had a great time there. And uh, the El Salvador trip was under the leadership of Esther Rico and Michelle Burley, and they led our students to El Salvador. And as I said, they built homes and did the citizens uh, market to help them. 
So uh, we really appreciate that. And it'll be a trip you'll want to hear more about next week. So that's pretty exciting. At least I hope you think so. <laughs> OK, goal on community outreach. The goal was to, this isn't a numerical one, but a better tell, our goal is to better tell our community service story. Uh, we always hear, you know, what does a rotary do? You know, so we're really making efforts to make people be able, community citizens be able to say, oh, they do. And in that vein, uh, the two new things for this year, again in green, was our Marquette Neighborhood Microforest and the Muskegon Rising podcast. Uh, the uh, logo of the podcast is up there on the screen. In addition, uh, we have our Family Night Community Mixer tomorrow at Mona Lake Park. That is an effort um, undertaken by the DEI committee and lots of you that help with that. We appreciate that. Be sure to come out tomorrow. Uh, we awarded $15,000 in community grants to area nonprofits and um, uh, philanthropic initiatives. Um, if we invested $1,700 for two food trucks. Uh, we still have the This Is What I Do interviews, and we've tried to increase our use of social media through Facebook and our YouTube channel. And so let me go with these people to say thank you. Uh, hold on. Community outreach. Uh, the council is chaired by Nancy McCarthy and Doug Wood. Um, under public relations, we have Marla Schneider, Rim, Susan Besteman, and Jackie Farr. Uh, social media it was JJ Lewis. It will be Nick Green going forward. As you know, JJ um, moved to the other side of the state. Uh, website, Mike Vogus, DEI, Andy Bilo, and Contessa Alexander, and our Peace Builders Club, Kathy Brubaker Clark. We thank all of them for their leadership and Again, everybody I left out that has been working on these areas, you're very important to the success of our initiatives. Okay. Um, a goal I had under service was I wanted us to have one service project each quarter. And we over exceeded in this area, proud to say, because there was a quarter where we had two. <laughs> so, uh, the first quarter began with the United Way Day of Caring uh, program, preparing the Marquette neighborhood microforest uh, for the planting. It involved clearing, putting down all that cardboard, covering it with wood chips. That was hot work on a day in early September, and we appreciated everybody that came out to help with that. The second quarter, um, there was a planting um, into containers of uh, trees, seedlings, and uh, sh um, shrubbery. And that was put into a cold frame to, over the winter. And then all those plants made an appearance um, later on. You'll hear about that. <laughs> the third quarter, our project was one of those food trucks I, I mentioned at the Mission for Area People parking lot. We served many people. We shared a video with you and the numbers at that time. Uh, the fourth quarter, uh, we did another food truck, same place, Michigan Mission for Area People's parking lot, and again, served uh, many people. Uh, the, there were three planting opportunities in the fourth quarter for the Marquette Neighborhood Microforest. Um, one of them uh, was students from Pennsylvania Elementary, part of the Reese Puffer system. They did a session just by them and their um, uh, teachers and uh, their principal, I believe, also was there. And then, of course, the other two involved interactors, many Muskegon Rotarians, the city of Muskegon, who collaborates with us on this. And um, it, it was just a great experience, and it's growing. And there is another service opportunity coming up, because when you plant, you also get weeds and <laughs> john nulling has put out an appeal uh for you i think you all got an email about helping to weed the microforest so that um, we don't grow weeds we grow trees so thank you for that um and i a special shout out to arn bozart sorry arn uh who made those food trucks possible thank you arn i said can we do it and arn put it together and i'm grateful for that um, I, um, 
the biggest goal for me uh, was the Rotary Foundation. I had been Rotary Foundation chairs for, I want to say seven years. It was a long time um, before I had this opportunity. So my goal was to raise awareness of the foundation and through that awareness and education to increase donations to Polio Plus and every Rotarian every year, which is known as the annual fund by 10%. Um, in terms of showcasing the Rotary International Foundation, we've done month, oh, I forgot, I keep forgetting to advance. Oh, no, I didn't, sorry. I, I didn't even know I did it, sorry. <laughs> Was uh, uh, to showcase uh, the themes each month. Uh, there's a slide there from November, which is Rotary Foundation Month. I always like this uh, smiling young lady getting some clean water from a spigot. So thought that was a nice theme to represent that. And then the, the videos that you see each week, again, to try to educate you on the scope of the service through Rotary International's Foundation. Um, the program committee was a huge help on this effort. They worked very hard to present at least one theme related program uh, during our weekly programs that would help illustrate the theme of the month. And um, I'm going to give a shout out to the program committee now because I appreciated that they embraced that and helped so much with it. Um, our chairs are Dave Alexander and Missy Horton. Uh, Chris Colley Vanderstel uh, was the past chair also this year. Heidi Seitzema, Tim Arter, Mike Vogus, Kim Borsma, and Arm Bozart all help with that. And of course, uh, shout out to Rotary in their National Foundation Chair, Meredith Smiley, who is responsible for our two brave Rotarian contests that benefited the Rotary Foundation. The one last fall uh, was the Rotary Foundation themed one, and that the proceeds from that went to Polio Plus, you know, all the, the $100 that everybody contributed to participate. The March Madness this year went to the annual fund. Um, so we did increase our donations to Polio Plus, not only through the contest, but also your weekly raffle proceeds help benefit Polio Plus. So we contributed $2,750 to that, which is over a 10% increase from last year, which was 2,200, I think. Um, and then I can't remember the figure for how much we donated to the annual fund, but I know we improved because it's never been our best, um, um, it's not where we shine, let's put it that way. But this year, the club uh, donated $5,260 that doesn't count all the donations that you as members have contributed to the Rotary Foundation, and we thank you for that support. It means a lot. And um, of course, contributing to the Rotary Foundation makes you part of a huge organization worldwide, and it really is the whole purpose of Rotary, is the work of the foundation. Um, now, okay, come on. Do I need to point somewhere else? Oh, there it is. It went. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> um, we, uh, this year, this is something presidents really like to talk about, how many of these we got to do. So I was really happy to report that um, Paul Harris Fellow Presentations, since uh, July 1st, we have presented nine Paul Harris Fellow Awards. We've presented five Paul Harris Plus awards, and there are more coming. Meredith has a lineup of them, and uh, she will be sharing those with us in the coming weeks. Um, I did want to show one that I was really proud of. That is Rem and I, who um, uh, named Kirk and Sheila Bahamaki Paul Harris Fellows. We were quite pleased to do that, and we had fun doing it together. And of course, that's your emblem of a Paul Harris Fellow, the medallion that is Howard Hardest. He always says during his orientation, I haven't figured out where I wear this. So. <laughs> we used to have them on the day that we did the big club presentation, but no more. But so all you Paul Harris Fellows, feel free to wear it someday and say, I wore it here. So. 
So um, in addition to the people that I've named, and I apologize profusely if I neglected to include you, um, I don't, I do think I meant to say Contessa and Andy are ahead of our DEI, and I, did I say that? And Kathy Brubaker Clark, of course, Peace Builders. I just saw you Contessa and it made me think of it, sorry. <laughs> so, um, but I also wanna give a big shout out to your Rotary, Muskegon Rotary Club Board of Directors. They have been a wonderful group to work with, the officers and the directors of the club this year. You'll hear more about them in a couple weeks. And there's a group that you, you might not be aware of, but it's called the Past Presidents Council Breakfast Club. It's got many names, but it's uh, we we the first Tuesday of every month we get together at Carmen's have breakfast, and it's a great sounding board for your current president to seek advice, guidance, and just uh, support from a group of people that know how to handle these things. Um, it's gratifying to know that there's, you know, a lot of problems that have existed before and there are solutions that existed before and they help you find those. And then finally, thank you to all of you. None of this would have happened without your support, your care and your commitment to Rotary's motto of service above self. Um, I have been honored to do this uh, job this year. I hope that I have uh, made left the club in a good place and I am ready well I won't go now there's a slide that says questions and there's so much more because I couldn't begin to cover everything that I wanted to so, so. so questions I know I wasn't that thorough so I'm I will take some be nice <laughs> That includes complaints. <laughs> as a board member, yes, I want to acknowledge um, what we as a board went through. Many people probably don't realize the um, struggle that we had, but it was a challenge that we accomplished. And that was um, the old song, Breaking Up is Hard to Do. Um, it would uh, go well with... Uh, what we did uh, to um, move on uh, from the Seaway Run and have that a, a continuing uh, um, uh, operation and a continuing uh, event in our community, very near and dear to my heart is someone from the Chronicle where it started and then uh, with the uh, YMCA board in the back past years. Um, but it was Jenny and um, Brianna Scott who really uh, got us through that and um, we're uh, having a a successful uh, run at the next Seaway run here at the end of the month. I hope we all come out and support that. And I just want to thank you for hours, and I will say hours, of efforts to get us to where we're at now. We're in a good place. Thank you. Thank you for that, Dave. <laughs> the um, board provided incredible guidance through that, too, Dom. So, like I say, nobody does this alone. You need the village that's there. Well, that's a great segue, Jenny, because okay. I was going to mention um, uh, not everyone knows how much work goes in behind the scenes. These are the highlights after the fact. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's enormous. And um, Jenny, there are so many things I admire about you as a person and as the soon to be past president. Um, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, you do it always with integrity. Um, you listen, uh, you're patient, and you have a wicked sense of humor. Oh, that's because you're married to some guy. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the kind comments, but I'm really here to answer questions. If you have. I've got one. Yes, Marianne. Of the things that might have been on your wish list uh, that, that perhaps didn't get addressed, tell us one thing that you'd like to see us work on in the coming year. Oh, um, well, I want you to continue to um, be inspired by the tremendous opportunity that we have through the Rotary International Foundation. I really want to, to see that um, in addition to the tremendous community support we provide, 
that we know that we're part of just a much bigger organization and our reach can really go far through our support, our financial support of the foundation. We also, you know, if you reach the, you know, we can, you, there's global grant opportunities and things like that, that we can um, aspire to in the future. But um, there is a structure that we have to conform to, to get there. And, you know, I, I think someday we will, and it is a process and it's learning and we are 250 members strong and we can do so much good, so. Continue that, please. And Arn. Uh, Jenny, uh, first of all, fabulous job. Thank you for what you've done. Uh, but a question, uh, sure. the foundation, the, what's the network? How, how does this club and how do you as club president connect with the foundation process? I, I assume it flows through the district and on up, but I've never really quite understood uh, how we connect with the foundation as as a major piece of the, the whole rotary system okay yeah it is rotary is a um, hierarchical system um, you know rotary international um, and as i said their philanthropic arm is the rotary international foundation they're sort of like on the same line but uh, the rotary club i if you know i'm probably putting words in their mouth but i sort of view that rotary um, international exists to further the work of the foundation because you know where as paul harris said we are here to serve <laughs> and this is you know we started small with a, a men's restroom on michigan avenue you know but uh, it's come up from there and um and then there's the zones um uh christine etienne who you a lot of you who are older uh, more seasoned rotarians excuse me uh will remember uh was one of our district governors and she is going to be our zone leader starting july 1st um they oversee a bigger area and uh, district 6290 is part of zone 28 and then uh, our district uh is who our most um that's our closest um link to all this structure and you know we really are going to be up close and personal because brianna scott is going our muskegon rotarian is going to be our district governor and you know if we can really get behind brianna and make her have a really great year we can learn more about how we can connect with all that including the foundation our own foundation um, we use um, to support our community projects. And then uh, we, we um, fund like, community grants through our fund at the Community Foundation. And then um, contributions go from our club directly to the Rotary International Foundation. It can get a bit Byzantine, but you know, get on the board, you'll learn all about this and it will make sense while you're there. <laughs> so. Did that even come close to answering your question, Arm? <laughs> Thank you. So we, we heard about your greatest challenge. Uh-oh, you promised you would leave me alone. <laughs> what was your greatest reward? My greatest reward? Um, you know, you think you know people, but when you work with people, you get to know them even better. And I so broadened my knowledge of everyone in this club and all the good work you do because of my honor of serving in this position. Um, that's my biggest joy that I'm taking away from it. And, uh, and uh, you know, everybody approaches this in, when you have that installation ceremony and you go home after, you know, all the, you know, at a, at a girl, at a boy, um, and you go, oh crap, don't let me screw this up. <laughs> so, but um, but more than that, you want to leave it better than you found it. That's always the goal. And with so many great people, you know, and you look out and you see all the community leaders, um, you know, just going, how can we not do really important things for our community? That's my greatest joy. And then I would also like to say my greatest joy would be anybody who is asked to serve on the board, to take an office, to say yes. It's a tremendous honor and it's a tremendous opportunity for you to really serve your club, your community, 
and the Rotary organization. So those are my parting words. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we are now I'm going to switch hats and go back to the regular stuff. Now I can quit being nervous. <laughs> so, yeah, I couldn't believe it. it's a lot easier to do the meeting than to do the program. I just want to say that. <laughs> okay, it's birthday time. We are going to say happy birthday to Lisa Stafford on June 13th. Dick Witham, June 15th. Ara Demergent, Doc, happy birthday on June 16th, Dom Bunker, June 19th, and Joey Foley, one of our newer Rotarians, also on June 19th. So happy birthday to all of them. We hope you have a great day, and don't forget your gift to the Caring Connection. I just told you, you help give money to Polio Plus. Okay, we are ready for our spotlight video for another person that helps make the Fellowship of Muskegon Rotary. Hi, I'm Susan Besteman, and I've been in Rotary for several years. A lot of the efforts that I've contributed through were through the RIM newsletter, the Rotary in Motion newsletter, and um, regarding community engagement and fellowship with the RIM newsletter, it's vital. It's a vital piece to that. Um, it provides that up-to-date information um, about the the club and our activities and what community engagements that were involved in at that time. It fosters engagement within the members and the community as well with all of the activities that the Muskegon Rotary Club is involved in. It's vital to spark that community conversation and the conversation between members and, and to get that volunteer list completed. I also really believe that the RIM inspires our members to get involved and um, to be active, to be part of this fantastic community um, and organization. The toughest part of RIM editing is the amount of time it does take each week, but we have a fantastic team of RIM reporters and photographers that are out there, and it makes editing a lot easier by having that fantastic team. Rotary is truly a, a blessing to our community, and I'm very thankful to be part of it. Susan and Jackie uh, really keep us in the know and we appreciate all they do. It is a big job. Uh, we don't have any inductions today and we don't have any more of those Paul Harris fellow. I could have upped my number, but no. Um, <laughs> but we do have announcements. Um, I'm, my first announcement is to um, remind all Muskegon Rotarians, you should have received an email from Kathy Hegedus with details about Brianna's uh, induction celebration as the new district governor of District 6290 that takes place on Tuesday, June 25th on the third floor of the Hilt Building. The reception begins at six o'clock followed by a buffet dinner and the ceremony begins at 7 p.m. The cost is $35 per person. Uh, Kathy's email has a link so you can go sign up for it. Um, you can also go to the District 6290 website and sign up. And I know that Kathy would even respond to an email, hey, I want to come <laughs> and, and, take, and work with you to do it that way. Um, we're really proud of Brianna taking this position and we really want to show her that our club is supporting her. Um, so we will hope that many of you will join us for that celebration of Brianna for Brianna. Thank you for that. Um, Rewind does not meet this week. Uh, this week's Muskegon Rising podcast is episode number 23. It's called Ensuring School Safety, a Conversation with John Gale. Uh, you can uh, reach it on buzzsprout.com or like I said, you can just do Google. That works too. And uh, 
be sure to take a listen wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, thank yous go out to Dom Baker, Dom Bunker, excuse me, uh, Karm Calkins, Jerry Cooster, Cynthia Maynard, Doug Wood, and Muskegon, Muskegon High School Interact student Tobias Melton. They are going to be placing the flags along um, Muskegon Rotary stretch of Seaway Drive tomorrow, Flag Day, June 14th. Uh, because John is up at Life Leadership, so they have stepped in to make sure that that happens, so we thank them for that. If you would like to help, you can get a hold of one of them, and I'm sure they would welcome it. Um, this is a reminder that the Harvest Fest um, is getting underway, Harvest Fest organization, and there will be a meeting next Thursday, June 20th uh, at 11 o'clock here um, uh, to discuss how you can volunteer to help Harvest Fest and, and uh, see what's involved. So please consider that, they would welcome you. And we have a couple of individual announcements. Um, and one thing I did forget to say, sorry, Rabbi Alpert, there is a clipboard going around for signups for the invocation for, he's got June, we're looking for July. So uh, please consider helping out with that and Rabbi, Pardon me for not saying that earlier. <laughs> so, Mary, Marianne or Marcia, who gives, uh, you're gonna go first, okay. Where? Yeah. For those of you, um, especially committee heads, um, are interested in having some uh, current literature about Muskegon Rotary, we recently had what we call our REC cards reprinted. So it's a small card, but it has a lot of really good information about uh, the impact that Muskegon Rotary is having in our community. Also, if you have a, a place of business or you go to a business that accepts rack cards uh, to promote different community events or organizations, let me know. We, we got a thousand of these printed and I really don't want them to just sit in my closet if you would next week i'll have a few on each table so you can pick them up and take with you in the meantime they'll always be available on the back table here and at the hotel so again uh, sometimes you wonder what do you want to emphasize and say is specifically about our projects and services here it is in one easy handout thanks your elevator speech right there <laughs> Good afternoon, Marsha Heavy Ray. Um, so tomorrow is the big day. Tomorrow is the Rotary Family Fun Night um, from five to nine uh, at the Mona Lake Park. That's the park that you can see the baseball field from Seaway Drive, right by the Heights. There, um, same place that we've had it in the past. Um, and I just talked to uh, the chair, uh, Jennifer Ross, and she said that over 400 people have said they were coming. So we'll have a good turnout. Um, last year, we we're competing with another similar event and it, it's, we suffered. Um, but this year, it's going to be great. Um, there'll be music. The weather looks good from the predictions. Uh, and we have had 23 of you sign up to volunteer. Um, and we, I did reduce the number so that you weren't standing around doing nothing because we, we had too many last year, believe it or not. Um, so we, we pared it down and, um, but please everyone come, it'll be fun. Bring your grandkids, bring your spouses, your partners, whatever, and wear your rotary shirts so that they know that we're, this is a rotary event. Um, the food options this year are um, the famous uh, catfish, which is my favorite. Uh, there's also the barbecue like we had last year, country cooking. Um, and then for the, uh, oh, and, and this year we added ice cream. So we had to add a couple of volunteers serving ice cream cups. So, um, and then for entertainment for the kids, there's a bounce house, there's um, slushies and cotton candy. So um, the good thing is we only need two more volunteers. Um, 
we need for the second shift, the seven to nine shift, somebody giving out ice cream cups, easy peasy. And the other uh, is the second shift alternate in case somebody can't come at the last minute. So um, if you can, uh, if you can help with either of those, um, I will be calling the people that aren't here to remind them so that they they come uh, when they're <laughs> when they're signed up. Uh, but uh, I was really pleased to have it all kind of fill in, and I got a few more today. So um, thank you all, and um, I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, thank you, Marsha. Thank you, Marianne. Okay, Ed, if you're still with us, we have a raffle to do. For ten bucks. Oh, Jane Klingman Scott, you're a winner. So, what's up next, Ed? For five dollars. Four eight seven eight. Is that Brad? I can't see. You're backlit. Congratulations, Brad. For for twenty bucks, the big one, the one you're all waiting for. Four eight three zero. Oh, Nancy Crandall. Congratulations to our winners. Better luck next time for the rest of us. So. <laughs> I mentioned our community grants earlier. Uh, we did receive a thank you note uh, from uh, Nancy McCarthy, Kim Suarez, and Marianne Gorman, who received a community grant of $5,000 for their Business Equity Initiative Fund. They say they were now in the process of selecting our third round of grantees and plan to award $50,000 this cycle. That's pretty impressive. An important part of our program is the support of business coaches, which we offer to our grantees. Your grant will make that possible and help to ensure that the women entrepreneurs we're working with have this help. Uh, they're going to advise us later on with how that worked out and we they want to take the opportunity to invite you to attend their awards event on July 31st. Um, I'm sure you'll hear more about that. It's at the Women's Club. So our program next week, as I mentioned, is a report on the Honduras and El Salvador service trips. Uh, if you will rise, we'll recite the four-way test. Of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Be beneficial to all concerned. We are adjourned. Go create some hope in the world. See you next week.